Make the beep. Make the beep. Ah. That equation on the left, before you actually solve it, I will ask you, what is your job when you see something that looks like that? Jack Anderson, isolate the variable. How do you isolate the variable? Jack Anderson. You would do the opposite of what you see, starting where? You would start with the 7 because you want to end up at the variable, yes? So since you all already know how to do this, you could solve that one in 2 seconds. And of course, you would do, without writing it down, 2x equals 18, x equals 9, of course. And then what should you do that none of you ever do? Jack. Put 9 back into the equation and make sure it works. 2 times 9 is 18. 18 plus 7 is 25, right? Right. What's different in the second equation? Jack. Uh, there's, a there's a square on there. Does anything else change? No, of course not. Because once something works in math, it always works. So if I get rid of a positive 7 by subtracting 7, I would get rid of a negative 7 by adding 7. I would get rid of a multiplication of 2 by dividing by 2. I would get rid of a division of 2 by multiplying by 2. I would get rid of a square by doing what? Square root. So of course this becomes 2x squared equals 72. x squared equals 36. And now what is the answer? The answer is x equals 6. Is it only 6? No, of course it isn't. Why is it not only 6? What is the real answer? The real answer is plus or minus 6. Why? Pardon me? If I square negative 6, I get positive 36, don't I? So, this becomes an issue. When I write an equation like this, you have two possible answers. So now, you already knew that. You just didn't have it burbling around at the top of your head. Now you know that if there is an exponent involved, there is a chance of more than one answer. Right? Right? Okay, let us go to this question. Is there an equal sign? No. No, so can you tell me an answer to this? No, what is the only thing you can do? Factor it, and what would you get? Absolutely, it is x minus 3 and x minus 12, correct? Yeah. Now, equals 0. Now, what are you going to do? How? Believe me, you already know. I'll show you, I'll prove it to you that you already know. 6x equals 0. What's the answer? X equals 6? X equals negative 6? Holy crap, you're in the 11th grade. What's the answer to this question? X equals 0. Why? Because 6 times 0 is 0. I don't know how to do that, Mr. Myers. Do you know how to do algebra? If it was 6x equals 18, what would you do? If I had this, what would you do? You would divide by 6. So what are you going to do here? Divide by 6. I have no pizza. I'm going to cut it into 6 pieces. How much pizza are you getting? None. Because I had no pizza. Right? Okay. I'm going to change this. X times 6 equals 0. What's the answer? 0. X is a factor. 6 is a factor. 
Why are those both factors? Mm, what is a factor? Wow. You just did a whole unit on factoring. What is a factor? I'll write it in a grade three way, so maybe you remember. Where are the factors? Three and four. So therefore, you know what a factor is. Tell me why six and x are factors. Because they are multiplying together to make a product of zero, yes? Okay, what is happening there? What does the bracket do to x and negative 3? No. What do the brackets do to x and negative 3? Hold it together as one single factor, yes? So, this is factor 1, isn't it? And this is factor 2, isn't it? This is factor one, isn't it? This is factor two, isn't it? Okay, so to have anything equal zero, factor one or factor two must be what? Zero, right? So in this question, either factor one has to equal zero or what else? Factor 2 would have to equal 0. What is factor 1? X minus 3. I heard someone whispering it. Equals 0. How would you solve that? Add 3. So X equals 3. What is factor 2? X minus 12 equals what? How would you solve that? x equals 12. So now you can see I had an exponent and I got two answers. What should I now do? That you guys never do. Put it back in the equation. What's 3 squared? 9. What's 15 times 3? 45. 9 minus 45 is negative 36. What's negative 36 plus 36? Zero. Does three work? Yay. 12. 12 squared, 144. 15 times 12 equal, no, 15 times 12 is? No one? What's 10 times 15? Calculator to do 15 times 12. What's 10 times 15? What's 2 times 15? What's 150 and 30? 180. Barf. Minus 36 plus 36. Does 12 work? Yes. So now you know how to solve equations with a square. You know how to solve equations with the same variable but, but twice. What would you do with this? Divide by 3, x cubed equals 8. Then you would cube root, and x would equal 2. One or two answers to that question. Is it plus or minus 2, or is it just 2? Just 2, just two because negative 2 squared is negative 8. Everybody cool? That is a review of all the algebra that you know right now. Is everybody cool? It was a bit like pulling teeth, but everybody understands this warm-up stuff, yes? Excellent. Now, please open your books to page 65. I lie. Page 63. Radical equations with one of my top 10 favorite fonts. Cherie Liney. No, it isn't Comic Sans Reef because everybody knows Comic Sans Reef is the lamest font in the world.
No, never, not even once, because Comic Sans Reef can kiss my rosy red, but poop, poop, poop. No, I don't hate any kind of unit. Well, that's not true. I don't like the finance unit. Yes. All right. Now, this page is entitled Radical Equations. As soon as you see the word equations, what does that mean you are going to be doing? Solving equations, which means you are applying what principles? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and square roots. How do you know square roots are going to be involved? Because it's called radical equations. Are we going to follow the principles that allow us to solve all other equations? Of course we are, because when something works once in math, how often does it work? Always. All right, so... Looking at that very first equation, what there bothers you? Does positive 5 bother you? No. We know what to do with that. Does the square root of 2x minus 1 bother you? Yes, it does. Also, we know that our goal is to get x by itself, right? So before we can get x by itself, we have to isolate what it is that, or the expression which includes x, right? So before you even have to worry about anything new here, you already know that you have to isolate x, right? And right now, x is part of a radical. So your first step in radical equations is always isolate the radical. And I've written that in black ink, so we're going to do this in black ink. What will I do to this first question to get the radical by itself? I will move the 5, just like I would do if this looked like this. Right? I'd move the 5, so let's move the 5. And we will do so in black ink. Now I have the root of 2x plus 1 equals what? Minus 5, minus 5, 7. Everybody cool? Oh, sorry. 2x minus 1. Thank you. Everybody cool? You don't need me to teach you that. You're, gonna iso you're trying to get x isolated, right? So we've done a good job. X is now one step closer to being isolated. Everyone agrees? Spectacular. What do you think the next thing to do is? Why would I want to square both sides? Because I need to get rid of the radical. Because the radical sign is in the way of me getting to X, isn't it? So step two, and I'm going to do that in red ink, is square in order to... Eliminate the radical. Now, Emma jumped once. She jumped to like step 2a. Because if you're going to square to eliminate the radical, you must square where else? On the other side. Because anything you do to one side, you do the other side. Yes? So, next step. Square. Square. Now, what does a square do to a square root sign? It eliminates it. So, what's left on the left? 2x minus 1 equals what? No. 49. Now, stop for a moment, especially because my pen is all of a sudden doing that thing where it stops writing, which means I may need to turn off the computer and start it again. Of course I do. Son of a... Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, there's going to be two videos today because of...